everyone, next I will share the characteristics of cardiac cycle and the heart sound to you. Before the atrial constriction, the heart is in full diastole. At this time, the semilunar valve closes, the atriovascular valve opens, and the blood flows from the veins through the atrial into the ventricles so that the heart continues to fill. In 0 0.1 second, the blood pushes into the ventricle by atrial constriction usually only account for about 25% of the total ventricular fillings. The contraction of the atrium can further increase the end dust volumes of the ventricle. That is the initial length of the ventricular muscle before contraction increases, thus make the contractility of the myocardium is increased, which improves the pump function of the ventricles. As shown in the figure, the pH changes in different periods of the cardiac cycle. Pressure changes in the R atrial, the A, C, and V vivers. A vivers, the atrial contraction, C vivers, bulging of the A V vivers. When the ventricle begins to contract, V vivers at the end of ventricle contraction, caused by the accumulated blood in the atrial while the AV wheels are closed. During the cardiac cycle, the turbulence caused by myocardial contraction, valve opening and closed, blood flow rate changes, and the vibration caused by the blood flow hitting the vascular walls and the Aortic walls can be transmitted to the chest wall through the surrounding tissues and can be heard in certain parts of the chest with the stethoscope. The corresponding sound is a heart sound. The sound, heart sound occurs in some specific period of the cardiac cycle and its tone and duration also have certain characteristics. A normal person can produce four heart sounds during one heartbeat. Usually only the first and second heart sounds can be heard by auscultation. The first heart sound marks the beginning of the vascular construction. It is most clearly escalated as an apical beat. It is, right, it is characterized by a low pitch and a longer duration. The first heart sound is caused by the sudden closing of the atriovascular valve, causing the vibration of the blood and the wall of the vehicle, as well as the vibration of the wall of the large blood vessels and blood turbulence caused by the ejection of the ventricle. The second heart sound marks the beginning of the ventricular diastole. The second intercostal space on the right and left sides of the sternum is most clearly escalated. It is characterized by a higher frequency and shorter duration. The second heart sound is mainly caused by the close of the aortic valves and pulmonary valves, and the impact of blood flow on the aortic root causing the vibration of blood. Vessel wall, valve, and ventricular wall in some healthy children and young people, the third heart sound can be heard occasionally. The third heart sound appears at the end of the rapid vascular feeding period. 
episode low frequency, low amplitude vibration. It is produced by the vibration caused by the sudden extension of the vesicular wall and uh, papillary mys muscles and the sudden papillary muscles and the sudden deceleration of the feeding blood flow at the end of the rapid feeding period. The first heart sound appears in the late period of the ventricular diastole. It is a group of vibration related to atrial constriction that occurs before the ventricular constriction period, also known as the atrial sound. Normal atrial constriction generally do not produce sound, but abnormally strong atrial constriction and when the completions of the left ventricular wall decreases, the fourth heart sound can be produced. Stroke output refers to the amount of blood injected by one heart beat in one ventricle, referred to as stroke volume. In a normal adult, the end diastolic volume of the left ventricle is about 125 mm and the end cytolic volume is about 55 mm. The difference between the two is the stroke volume, about 70 mm. Not all the blood filled in the ventricle was ejected. The stroke volume is the percentage of the ending asterly volume of the ventricle is called the ejection fraction. The ejection fraction of a healthy adult is 35% to 65%. The amount of blood ejected per minute from one side of the ventricle is called the output per minute. Or cardiac output. The cardiac output of the left and right ventricles is basically the same. The cardiac output is equal to the product of the heart rate and the stroke volume. Cardiac output adapts to the body's metabolic level. The cardiac output of men, young, and active is relatively how. The cardiac output of a person at rest is proportional to the body surface area. The cardiac output calculated per unit body surface area is called the cardiac index. The cardiac index means and the rest and the fasting conditions is called the rest cardiac index. The resting cardiac index is 3.0 to 3.5 liters. The heart rate index increases with young exercise, pregnancies, uh, emotional agitation, and eating. The preload can make the skeletal muscles at a certain initial length before contraction. The end Diastolic volume of the ventricle is equ equivalent to the preload of the ventricle. Because the ventricular and the diastolic volume and the vesicular and diastolic pressure have a good correlation. Within a certain range, the ventricular and the diastolic pressure is often used to reflect preload in experiments. In addition, since and diastolic atrial pressure of normal people is almost equal to the intravascular pressure, and the measurement of intra-atrial pressure is more convenient, the end diastolic atrial pressure of the ventricle is often used to reflect the peer preload of the ventricle. The curve drawn by the corresponding stroke volume data 
update with each given ventricular and diastolic pressure value is called the ventricular function curve, also as known as the frank stalin curve. The ventricular function curve is divided into three sections. One, left the ventricular and diastolic pressure in the range of 5 to 15 millimeters HD is the ascending branches of the curve. As the ventricular and diastolic pressure increases, the ventricular stroke work also increases. Two, the left ventricular and the diastolic pressure is in the range of 15 to 20 millimeters Hg, and the curve tends to be flat, indicating that the preload has little effect on stroke work and the ventricular pumping function when the preload changes in its upper range. 3. The left ventricular and diastolic pressure is higher than 20 mm Hg. The curve is flat or even slightly downward, but there is no obviously dissident branch, indicating that even if the ventricular preload exceeds 20 mm Hg, the stroke walk remains and change the hole only slightly reduces. This kind of uh, adjustment that causes a change of myocardial contractility by changing the initial length of the myocardium is called abnormal length self-regulation. Different initial lengths can change the effective overlap of the thick and thin filament in the myocardial segmenter. When the international length of the segmenter is 2.00 to 2.20 vm, the thick and thin filamenter are in the best overlapping state. When the cross broad is activated, the number of connections with actin in the largest and the tension produced by the contractions of the sacometer is largest. The initial length at this time is the optimum initial length. The main physiological significance of uh, Normal self-regulation is uh, to fine-tune the small changes in stroke volume to maintain a balance between vascular ejection volume and uh, venous return blood volume, thereby keeping vascular and diastolic volumes and uh, pressure within the normal range. The preload of the ventricle mainly depends on the amount of blood field in the end diastole of the ventricle, which is the sum of the amount of the blood returned from the vein and the amount of blood remaining in the ventricle after ejection. In most cases, the amount of venous return heart blood is the main factor that determines the size of ventricular preload. The venous return blood volume is affected by factors such as ventricular feeding time, venous return speed, ventricular diastolic function, ventricular complaints and uh, intrapericardial pressure. Outer blood pressure is the afterload encountered during vascular contraction and the overall conditions when the outtake pressure of a normal person changes within the range of 80 to 170 mm Hg. The cardiac output generally does not change 
significantly. This is because in addition to the increase in the national length of the myocardium through the above-mentioned abnormal less self-regulation mechanism, the body can also change the myocardial constriction ability through the neural and hero mechanism in a manner of isometric ad adjustment so that the stroke volume can adapt it to the changes in afterload. The physiology cause significance of this adjustment is that when the aortic blood pressure changes within a certain range, the stroke volume can be maintained at a near normal level. Preload and overload are external factors that affect the heart pumping blood and the function state of the muscle it itself is also an important factor that determines the effect of muscle contractions. The myocardial does not depend on the preload and offload, but can change the inherent characteristics of its mechanical activity, which is called the myocardial catechotality, also known as the invariant state of the myocardium. Myocardial contractivity is affected by many factors such as sympathetic. Myocardial contractility is affected by many factors sympathetic nerve, or the epinephrine and norepinephrine enhance the strength and the velocity of the cardiac contraction. The change of myocardial properties is independent of the preload. Importance as per long time influence on the cardiac output. This graph so that the action of sympathetic stimulations. Sympathetic nerve stimulations increases cardiac contractility and addresses the heart is and sympathetic tone. Now, dread line against calcium in trying to cardiac cells. Parasympathetic stimulation has little effect on contractility due to the innovation patching of the heart. Normal adults have a heart rate of 30 to 100 beat minute is a quiet state, with an average of about 75 beat minute. The heart rate can vary greatly with age, gender, and different physiology consistencies. The heart rate of newborns is faster. As the age increases, the heart rate gradually slows down, and the heart rate is usually slower in people who often perform physical labor or sports. The heart rate is too fast, exceeding 160 to 118 beat minutes and the heart rate is too low, lower than 40 beat minutes, and the cardiac output is also reduced. In the overall situation, the heart rate is regulated by nerve and humoral factors. When the sympathetic nerve activity increases, the heart rate increases. When the weak nerve activity increases, the heart rate slows down. The heart rate increases when the level of epinephrine 
nephrine and thyroid hormone in the circulation blood increases. And the heart rate can increase 12 to 18 times per minute for every increase in body temperature by 1 degree. Healthy adults have a cardiac output of 5 to 6 liters in a quiet state during strenuous exercise. The cardiac output can reach 25 to 30 liters, which shows that the pumping function of the normal heart has a considerable result. The ability of cardiac output is increases according to the body's metabolic needs is called cardiac pump function reserve or cardiac power reserve. Cardiac pump function reserve can be expressed by the maximum blood volume that the heart can inject per minute, that is the maximum output of the heart. The size of the reserve mainly depends on the degree to which the stroke volume and heart rate can be improved. So the heart pump function reserve includes two parts, stroke volume reserve and heart rate reserve. Stroke volume is the difference between vascular and diastolic volume and end systolic volume. Therefore, stroke volume reserve can be divided into systolic reserve and diastolic reserve. The former is achieved by enhancing myocardial contractility and ejection fraction why the literature is uh, achieved by increasing the end diastolic volume. And normal circumstances when quite in the diastolic volume 145 millimeters and the systolic volume 75 millimeters is stroke volume 70 millimeters heart rate 75 beat minutes. So normal cardiac output is 5.25 liter meter minutes. This graph tells maximal diastole volume 160 millimeters maximal systole residual volume 20 millimeters maximal heart rate 180 beat meters maximal cardiac output is 2502 light minute the heart rate of a normal healthy adult as rest is 60 to 100 beat minute. If the stroke volume returns and changes, the heart rate is accelerated within a certain range. When the heart rate reaches 160 to 180 beat minute, the cardiac output can be increased to 2 uh, 2.5 times set at rest, which is called the heart rate reserve. However, if the heart rate is too fast due to the short diastolic and uh, insufficient ventricular fee feeling, it can lead to a decrease in stroke volume and cardiac output. That's all for this lesson. Thank you. See you later.